Good day everyone. Today we are continuing our follies with the Power Macintosh 7300. In the last video, we successfully gave this thing a full test. We found that it booted up and worked absolutely fine. The uh, popping, hissing, crackling speaker problem mysteriously went away. I don't know if that's because uh, the computer was now put together running rather than being run while open like I had it in the first video or perhaps because I now have per peripherals connected to it, I don't know. But uh, that went away, which is sweet. Uh, we found that the CD-ROM drive worked just fine, and we found that the floppy drive uh, was not working, however, I fixed it because I'm just that good. Just needed some lubrication, not the first time that I have seen and fixed a floppy drive like that. So, I mentioned that I wanted to wipe, basically wipe the hard drive clean, and reinstall a fresh new operating system on it. I found off camera that uh, half of the two gigabyte hard drive in this thing is used up just full of crap and who knows what. So yeah, I definitely want to clean it off. Uh, just uh, to remind you guys, this thing is running Mac OS 8.0. I assume it would have been upgraded at some point because uh, according to low end Mac, this machine originally shipped with Mac OS, uh, rather system 7.5.5. Now, I have done some work towards putting a new operating system on this thing uh, off camera. I'll explain what I've done while I let this thing boot up. Nothing has changed so far. The original OS is still on the hard drive there. So, uh, of course, Apple has made system 7.5.3 freely available to download as well as the 7.5.5 update. Uh, now, according to Low End Mac, the uh, lowest operating system this thing can run is 7.5.5. So, uh, by that logic, I would not be able to install 7.5.3, it just wouldn't work. So what I tried was, I did try, see, to install 7.5.3, you need a boot floppy to start from first, and Apple provides a boot floppy which is based on 7.5.0. So what I did was, I, uh, I used the Desk Pro to write that boot floppy, and that's the wonderful thing about newer floppy drive, new, newer Macs with floppy drives, they can read and write PC floppies, and likewise, PCs with the appropriate software can write uh, 1.4 megabyte Macintosh floppies. So I used the Desk Pro. I needed a uh, Stuff It Expander to uh, extract the archive containing the uh, System 7.5.0 boot disk image. And then I used WinImage to write the floppy. And I tried it in there and indeed it worked. I first just put it in here and, and it came up on the desktop here. And uh, it could see all the files and everything. And then I tried booting from it. You just have to restart. And uh, it did start to boot from it, but then it gave me an error message. It said that this Macintosh is not compatible with this version of Mac OS. So it seems indeed you need at least 7.5.5 uh, to run this thing. So the, f the freely available 7.5.3 is no good to me, because uh, you, know, you have to install that first before putting on the 7.5.5 update, so obviously it wouldn't work. So I uh, skulked the internet a bit more. And uh, I did find a CD image of Mac OS 9. I burned it. I, uh, I used the Desk Pro to burn it. And I put it in here while it was still running Mac OS 8. And indeed it recognized the CD and read it and everything. However, uh, it had an extremely hard time reading it. It took a long time for it to recognize it. You could hear the, the uh, head mechanism grinding back and forth over and over. And I tried booting from it, and indeed it started to boot, but it never finished. Uh, the CD drive just, you know, just tried over and over and over, and eventually it just gave up and it froze. So, uh, yeah, uh, not surprisingly, this, of course, being quite an old drive, it really doesn't like recordable CDs. Or writables are impossible, but recordables uh, are, are, can be uh, quite sketchy. Although I did try uh, a random recordable CD that I had burned years ago, and it read it just fine. So, uh, I tried another CD, and uh, this time I burned it in the Travelmate. 
Same thing, this thing recognized it, but it could just barely read it, could hardly read it at all. So then I said, okay, I'll, I'll find another brand of CD. So I got this CD. It's a Hewlett Packard CD. The first two were Fuji, Fuji film. And I burned this CD in the Dell Inspiron 1525. And as you can see, uh, kind of a hilarious combination of events. I'm currently installing the latest version of the Windows 10 preview on the Dell Inspiron 1525. But I burned this CD in that, and I tried it, and it works just fine. Not only is it perfectly readable, but I actually restarted with it in, and it booted right up from it into Mac OS 9. That's awesome. So here's Mac OS 8. I haven't done anything yet. And uh, what we're going to do is, oh, you can also see, I thought it was appropriate. I got my Apple mouse pad that came with the iMac. And, uh, yeah, the mouse works just fine on it. Sweet. It's better than that stupid box. So I'm going to put this Mac OS 9 install disk in. We're going to restart. Where's my sound? There we go. Oh, and there you see it came right up. I could probably install it from within Mac OS 8 here, but I want I want it to be perfectly clean. I'm going to boot right from the disk. So I'm going to restart. And I'm going to hold the C button when it restarts. Holding C down prompts it to boot from the CD. There it goes. Floppy disk icon. Happy Mac. And there we go. Mac OS 9. So we are now booting. And uh, it doesn't take terribly long, despite that only being a 12x drive. Has this... <laughs> this background CD to let you know I guess loads a few extensions there's the menu bar and uh... yeah I wish I could use the Trinitron for the display instead of this LCD thing cause of course this thing only looks good at its native resolution which is 1280 by 1024 and uh, of course on an old operating system like this that's a really high resolution all the icons and stuff are really small but the thing with the Trinitron of course being a CRT I'd have to turn steady shot on this camcorder off and then it'd be shaky so I figure uh, a slightly fuzzy display is probably better than shakiness but as you can see Mac OS 9 started right up here let's go into about this Mac and there it is, using 20 megabytes of memory, as opposed to about 10 megabytes in Mac OS 8. Mac OS 9 did, is a, a lot more bloated than Mac OS 8. A lot of people with Macs of this vintage opt to run Mac OS 8, but I always like to run the newest, have the most software compatibility. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's actually, let's go, let's, let's just jump right in. Let's go into disk tools and wipe the hard drive. Uh, it'd be in utilities here. And drive setup. Macintosh HD. Initialize. The following will destroy all data Macintosh HD. Oh boy, when I do this, I hope Mac OS 9 installs successfully or I'm gonna, I'm gonna be left with an unusable Mac. Go. Done. The original installation of Mac OS 8 has been destroyed. There's now nothing on the hard drive. my left shift not work? Oh, that's dumb. The left shift key doesn't work on this keyboard. Or maybe where it's a French keyboard, the computer's not recognizing it. 
the right shift key works. Does caps lock work? Yeah, caps lock works. Well, anyway, we've now renamed the drive Macintosh HD, just like it normally would be. And uh, there should be nothing on it. Yep, completely clean, zero items. Okay, we're going to go to Mac OS install. Okay, welcome. Continue, Macintosh HD. This space required to install Mac OS 9, 200 megabytes, almost. Select. Continue. Continue. Agree. Click start. Now I can customize the installation. Uh, personal web sharing. Don't need that. Don't need that. Well, I guess I shouldn't be picky. I don't know what any of this stuff does. So, uh, yeah, I just removed remote access and personal web sharing. And start. Boy, I hope this works. I had a really... It's, like, super hard to find Mac OS, like, disk images and stuff. If this doesn't work, I don't know what I'll do. It was hard enough. I didn't think I'd be able to uh, get it on a CD that that drive would read. I'd have to either buy an IDE card, which is expensive, or get another scuzzy CD-ROM drive, which is also expensive. I, I don't know what I would do, but it's working so far. And so is my Windows 10 installation. Now, of course, this is installing Mac OS 9.0. Uh, this machine can take up to 9.1, so I'll have to get the 9.1 update, which is also freely available from Apple. Now, it's funny, uh, I say freely available from Apple. Apple did indeed m make all these updates, as well as the entire uh, system 7.5.3, free to download from their servers about 15 years ago. However, as of uh, two or three years ago, uh, Apple's not hosting it anymore, so now you even have to hunt around on the internet to get even these freely available stuff, because Apple decided not to host it anymore, which is too bad. We'll see who wins the installation race, Mac OS 9 or Windows 10. Place your bets in the comments. Less than a minute left. And Windows 10's at 89, 90%. Oh. I think Mac may have just won. Installation is finished. Click quit to leave this program. Alright, well that's it. I think we can, uh... We can just restart. So Mac is won. Take our CD out. Let's hope this works. Looks like it is. There we go. Mac OS 9. Sweet, I'm really glad that worked. So this thing now has a brand new clean installation of Mac OS 9. Loading quite a few extensions. Got quick time. Oh, and now Windows is restarting. Mac beat it just by a hair. We're not, Mac's not finished loading yet. Windows could beat it if Windows starts up faster. Oh, there's our icons. And I'd say we're done. So Mac won. Mac OS 9. Oh. Mac OS Setup Assistant getting in my way. US Trent. Oh, the friggin' shift key. I wonder if the shift key's broken or uh, computer's just not recognizing it. I don't know. I use the right shift key. Right. Are you observing daylight savings time? Uh, I never have a friggin' coil.
I'll assume that's the time and date. Yeah, I know the date's right. Time zone. Oh, it's listed, listed by city. I need Halifax. Halifax? Hello? It doesn't have it. That's yes, usually what operating systems have for Atlantic time is uh, Halifax. Oh, I don't know. How is your printer? I don't have a printer. No, I have no printer. Yeah, I'd go for it. Thank you. Alright, where were we before we were interrupted? Mac OS 9, version 9.0, 96 mega RAM, almost 15 megabytes used. So not too much bigger than uh, Mac OS 8. Let's uh, go into the control panel, see if I can speed up the mouse or if it's already set all the way. Yeah, it's already set all the way. Oh, that's interesting. They, uh, they use the hockey puck mouse for the iMac. That's neat. Yeah, I wish. I wish this it could go faster than this, but oh well. That's doable. Oh, we have our control strip now. That wasn't there before, I don't think. Uh, 640 by uh, 800 by 600. There, it's a bit more doable. 1.71 gigabyte available. Yeah, this thing seems to be working just fine. Wow, they really hadn't changed the calculator since the early versions of Mac OS. Well, I don't know what else there would be to, sh to show. This thing seems to be working. Awesome. That's creepy. Yeah, well, that seems to be about it. That's about all there is to bother showing here. So, uh, success! Awesome! We got Mac OS 9 running on the Power Macintosh 7300. Awesome! So, uh, what am I gonna do after this? I have no clue. What I'd like to do is try and dual boot it with uh, Mac OS 7.6. Because, uh, you know, there's quite a bit of difference between Mac OS 7 and uh, Mac OS 9. So uh, I figured it'd be kind of cool to be able to uh, switch between them for whatever reason. So I might continue working at that if I find a copy of Mac OS 7.6. I'll uh, see if I can dual boot that with Mac OS 9 here. So uh, there you go for now. There's the Power Macintosh 7300 from 1997 successfully installed Mac OS 9 and this thing's working just great. Awesome, I love it. Well, I found the Mac OS 9.1 update. It says it requires a G3, but that's not true. It'll work on the 600 series power PC processors. But uh, the only thing is it's 70 megabytes, so uh, there's no transferring it over via floppy disk. I could burn another CD, but you know, that's wasteful if I had to burn a CD for everything I wanted to put on this thing. I'd have many CDs, I imagine, and I highly doubt I'm going to find a rewritable that this thing will read. So uh, what I think I'll have to figure out is uh, how to network this thing. If I can get this to interface with uh, one of my PCs, then I'll be able to transfer anything I want over Ethernet. And uh, hopefully I can get that to work. If not, as a last resort, I'm pretty darn sure I could network this thing with the iMac and uh, have the iMac also running Mac OS 9 and transfer files over that way. But we'll see. We'll see in another video. Mac OS 9.2 version 9.2.2, 512 MB, 513MB virtual memory, na -na -na -na, software update. I wonder why that's using memory. All right, screwed in, let's see what goes bang. Oh, that's so cool. Warm white, quite a nice color. I can see it has plenty of mercury. If you look at the ends of the lamp there,